Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So welcome all again. So today we will learn about the salient results of the studies done on the tribochemistry of a particular cermet materials. So outline of the present lecture will be I will introduce these titanium carbonitride based cermets and a brief introduction on their microstructural characterization and then I will focus majority of this lecture on explaining the friction results, wear results and the dominant wear mechanisms and the tribochemistry involved in the wear. So let us start understanding what is this cermet. Cermet is a ceramic with a metallic binder, so it is called a cermet. So several examples of cermet, cermets are used in engineering applications. So, few examples like tungsten carbide cobalt cermet, aluminum oxide nickel cermet, zirconium oxide nickel or titanium carbide with nickel or cobalt or titanium carbonate with nickel. These are several examples of the cermet materials used in engineering applications. Regarding the engineering applications, these cermets are mainly used in cutting tool applications as an insert for the cutting tool. So in machining if you look at the tip of this nose of this tool and the work piece there is a large amount of friction generated. So this friction induces the wear but this friction induces the temperature high temperature as well. So the friction induced heat at the same time the damage both simultaneously occur and lead to the material degradation. So particularly in this cutting applications the mechanisms shall be studied in the crater wear or the flank wear of this cutting tool inserts. So titanium carbonate based cermets they are important because they have lesser density, extended tool life with superior surface finish, good chemical stability at elevated temperature and excellent creep and wear resistance, excellent chip and tolerance control that leads to geometrical accuracy. So the market of the cutting tools used for machining harder materials is generally dominated by the tungsten carbide cobalt. So compared to tungsten carbide cobalt cermet, these titanium carbonate cermets are attractive because of their properties as mentioned here. So in these cermet materials the ceramic of titanium carbonate is attached with a metal generally nickel, cobalt, molybdenum. So nickel generally used as a binder phase because of its good wettability with the TACN particles. So the ceramic of TACN attached with the nickel binder as a cermet the titanium carbonitride with nickel is a promising material for cutting tool applications. So apart from this binder phase which gives us the toughness there are certain carbides or nitrides also added to improve the performance for the cutting tool applications. For example the tantalum carbide or niobium carbide or hafnium carbide these are generally used to improve the heart hardness or the thermal shock resistance. So when these cermets added with this combination of these carbides they improve the intermittent cutting performance. 
The titanium nitride is generally used to improve the wear resistance, whereas the titanium carbide is used for improving the hardness. The densification will be improved if you add the tungsten carbide or molybdenum carbide. Tungsten carbide is also known to improve the toughness of this material. So, from the compositional design aspect of these materials, it is very important to evaluate and understand the influence of various additions on the wear properties. So, on this basis, this particular study was done to understand the behavior of these composites, the ceramic with a metal composite that is called cermets in a sliding wear conditions. For these, cermet materials were prepared by a powder metallurgical processing route. Initially, the powders of the titanium carbonitride and nickel and then respect to carbides of tungsten carbide, niobium carbide, tantalum carbide or hafnium carbide were mixed in a ball mill using tungsten carbide cobalt balls in acetone. These were compacted at 100 MPa and then these cermet batch compositions after compaction, these compacts were sintered in a conventional way pressureless sintering at 1510 Celsius for 1 hour under vacuum. So, these are the investigated cermet compositions TACN with 28 percent nickel and TACN 28 percent nickel with 10 percent tungsten carbide or 10 percent niobium carbide or 10 percent tantalum carbide or 10 percent hafnium carbide. So, these cermets were studied. So, after sintering the microstructure looks like this. There is a black core region and then there is a shell generally called the rim region and then attaching this binder phase. So, the black region is a core whereas, this grey color region is a rim and then a brighter region is a binder phase. So, EDS analysis of these respective three different phases indicate the core which is black is rich with the titanium. Whereas, the rim region also contains the along with the titanium the tungsten and whereas, the nickel this binder phase which is brighter a bit in the contrast having uh, nickel titanium. So, these all the core and rim structure is believed to develop by liquid phase sintering. So, when the liquid forms like nickel having a low melting point than this titanium carbonitride while sintering these cermets, this nickel melt will penetrate among the uh, particles of these ceramic ceramics titanium carbonitride and the respective carbides. So, they wet these solid particles, the liquid wets the solid particles and there is a dissolution of the solid and in the process of sintering there is a precipitation. So, the undissolved portion is a core whereas, the precipitated portion is a rim. So, if you look at the x-ray mapping of these cermet material, so you can also see there is a core region again rich with this tungsten or titanium whereas, the rim region having titanium and tungsten and carbon nitrogen and the binder region having the nickel or titanium. So, we confirm that the core is of titanium carbonitride rich phase whereas, the rim is a solid solution of titanium tungsten carbonitride. So, it is a schematic representation of this microstructure obtained for the cermet material. So, there is a core region and the rim region and again the rim region is divided into outer rim and a inner rim. Generally, inner rim is rich with the heavy metal from the carbides from the second added secondary carbides and the and this is the binder, re, binder region which is nickel rich binder region. So, this is a uh, collection of the typical microstructures of the investigated cermets. So, you can see more or less the similar features are present in the sintered materials 
but there is a difference in the frequency of the core or the rim phases as well as well as the size of the score or rim phases. So, very systematic investigation using uh, line intercept method, it shows a larger core region, average core region uh, is around 2.8 micron meter in the titanium carbonate nickel tungsten carbide cement, whereas the smaller region of the core is in the titanium carbonate nickel hafnium carbide cement. So, there is a average size difference in the cores obtained after the sintering. So, this actually reflects on the mechanical properties as well. The hardness you can see that it ranges from around this 9 to 12 giga Pascal with change in the composition. Now, more or less this baseline cement does not uh, without having any carbide and that having the hafnium carbide or this neobium carbide having a, a range of hardness between 9 and 10 giga Pascal. Whereas, higher hardness are obtained for the cermets containing tungsten carbide and the tantalum carbide. Out of them the cermet having this tantalum carbide shows the maximum hardness followed by this uh, cermet containing tungsten carbide. But you can see the fracture toughness, fracture toughness ranged from the 11 to 15 ampere root meter. Of course, the maximum fracture toughness is obtained uh, for the titanium carbonate with nickel without having any secondary carbides. So, by adding the secondary carbides, the fracture toughness seems to reduce and out of these cermets added with secondary carbides, the, the cermet with tungsten carbide addition and the tantalum carbide addition shows the maximum fracture toughness. So, so with this information, we did some sliding wear for the uh, uh, cermets in a reciprocated sliding conditions. So, as explained earlier, the reciprocated sliding gives a information, gives a lar longer contact time. So, the material will be subjected to more wear as well as the debris will be in la longer contact. So, there is a difference in the, the subsequent wear. So, for these experiments, we selected a sliding wear tester, which, res, which reciprocates over a short distance and these experiments were done in the University of Ljubljana, Slo Slovenia. So, mainly the experiments were done for the investigated cermets with changing load 5, 20 and 50 Newton that gave a initial Hertzian stress maximum of 0 0.9, 1.5 and 2.1 giga Pascal respectively and all other parameters kept constant. So, let us understand the results obtained from this study. So, if you can see the coefficient of friction as a function of number of cycles, so more or less the similar features can be observed. Now, initially the coefficient of friction increases to a maximum value in within few hundreds of cycles and then it, it, it actually have the same steady state until the end of this experiment. So, generally speaking the coefficient of friction uh, is maximum in initial stages because of the running in period behavior, where it is, it is presumably, presumably because of the rubbing action of the asperities in the initial uh, stages of this friction. Once these asperities are rubbed against each other, there forms a stable contact and that leads to a steady state. Now, this is running in period as well as the steady state is observed in all cermets, but there is a difference with respect to the load or with respect to the uh, cermet compositions. Let us understand with respect to load, the, the the coefficient of friction in the steady state is higher for any cermet at a lower load of 5 Newton, whereas 20 Newton and 50 Newton load conditions gave a reduced friction compared to that obtained at 5 Newton, 
but there is no much difference in the friction obtained uh, at 50 or 20 Newton. So, but there is a difference in the steady state coefficient of friction value. So, these were actually tabulated the average steady state coefficient of friction for the investigated cermets and as well as for the uh, different loading conditions are like this. You can see higher coefficient of frictions are obtained at the lower loads whereas, this actually decreased to uh, at higher loads of 20 or 50. The average steady state coefficient of friction is in between 0 0.64 to 0 0.75 at 5 Newton for the investigated cermets. Whereas, at higher loads of 20 or 50 Newton, it is actually varying from around 0 0.46 to maximum 0 0.52. But there is no much difference from the friction obtained at higher loads of 20 or 50 Newton. Now, among the investigated cermets, even at a higher, even at a lower load of 5 Newton, you can see the minimum coefficient of friction was obtained for the cermet having the tungsten carbide whereas, maximum flow coefficient of friction is obtained for the cermet having the hafnium carbide or for the tan for the baseline cermet it is almost the same or almost there is no much difference here. But you can see the overall coefficient of friction at lower load the coefficient of friction is high whereas, at higher load the coefficient of friction becomes less. So, it actually indicates a two load regime conditions a higher load that is a 20 or 50 Newton or at a lower load it is a 5 Newton the friction is changed. Now, let us understand. So, uh, the wear behavior the wear behavior can be understood by the specific wear rate data. So, again the surface profiles were uh, recorded for each track at a different locations and then the depth and the uh, width of this wear track were measured using uh, stylus profilometry and then integrating over a distance then we get a volume of the material removal. So, it is normalized with the distance and the time. So, we get a specific wear rate. Now, and see it is the the specific wear rate actually varied in a very long larger range. So, the specific the wear rate is maximum for the baseline cermet particularly at lower loads. So, at lower loads maximum is obtained at this base for the baseline cermets and minimum wear rate is obtained for the cermet having the tantalum carbide followed by the tungsten carbide. So, the wear rate again decreased from low load to high load. So, if you take any cermet composition the the wear rate decreased from 5 Newton load to uh, 20 or 50 Newton load again the difference between the 5 Newton and 20 Newton is much larger than from the 20 to 50 Newton in any cermet. So, among the investigated cermets higher wear is obtained for the baseline cermet uh, and the cermet containing the hafnium carbide while other cermets exhibit comparable wear resistance with the baseline cermet. We can actually relate with the mechanical properties. So, the this relation with the mechanical properties is like this the cermet having higher hardness higher hardness shows a lesser wear right and the one which is having the lowest hardness shows higher wear. So, but you can see there is no much relation between the fracture toughness and the cermet. So, this may be related to the absence of any cracking at the interface of these core and rim or the rim or the binder. So, which will be seen in the next slides. Let us understand this the behavior uh, with respect to wear and friction by studying the worn surfaces. These are the semi SCM images obtained for the baseline cermet of titanium carbonitride with nickel at three different load conditions. After wear test was done these were subjected to SEM uh, 
uh, analysis and you can see these surfaces reveal almost like a deformed region and large pullouts in a lower load conditions whereas at higher loads the surface is more or less covered with the layer whereas such a layer is minimum at a lower load conditions so one observation is at higher loads the wear is dominated by the pullout or the deformation conditions and higher loads it is basically by the layer formation and their removal the eds analysis of this particular layer fragments shows there is an oxides of titanium or iron whereas at higher loads you can see again that oxides of titanium and iron but very in interesting observation is the titanium peak actually is reduced whereas the iron is increased so with increase in load the iron oxide content is more than the titanium oxide in the layer so there is a deformation and uh, in onset of the trilayer formation at lower load whereas the dense trilayer formation is observed at the higher loads the worn surfaces of the titanium carbonate red nickel tungsten carbide cement shows again at lower load minimal presence of this layer whereas at higher load we you will you will see majority of the surface is occupied by this covered by this layer and again the eds analysis shows a similar observation that they become more a uh, more rich with the iron oxide in uh, at the higher load conditions so the increase in the friction induced temperature because of the higher loads and also the compaction of those debris result in the formation of such a layer and this layer actually protects the underneath surface so that reduces the wear or the friction so these are the one surfaces for the titanium carbonate red nickel niobium carbide cement you can again see there is a pull out of this material and the signatures of the tribo layer and also uh, the entrapment of the debris on the layer along with this abraded grooves so so more or less the similar features are observed but if, in all these conditions the nickel presence is very much minimum on the tribo layer so this is the uh, these are the one surfaces obtained for the cement after sliding uh, at 5 and 15 newton the cement was titanium carbonate red nickel and tantalum carbide again it shows the coverage of the tribal uh, tribal layer by the tribal layer at higher loads so hafnium carbide containing cement shows very severe pull outs and the cracked material whereas at again higher loads there is a layer formation so the x ray mapping of these cement materials after sliding at higher load also indicate see this is the uh, layer and this is rich with the iron oxygen whereas these la these layered areas are not having any nickel or hafnium or this titanium the counter body surfaces also show this tribo layer formation at a higher loads at higher loads so again these the signatures of this layer formation and the counter body are also rich with the iron oxides whereas the wear results for the counter body steel ball shows almost similar features with increase in load there is a decrease in the wear decrease in the wear but very important observation is for that cement having the highest hardness we showed the lowest wear at lower load this showed highest wear for the counter body right counter body so 
though the baseline cermets actually showed a lesser wear than this one. So, let us understand this more detail by analyzing the debris. So, these debris were collected for a different cermet which is having long larger amount of tungsten carbide and subjected to the same conditions of the uh, uh, sliding at 50 Newton. These debris were collected carefully after sliding and then these debris were subjected to EDS and X-ray diffraction analysis. So, you can see the debris, the, the shape of the debris is like a platelet and some of them are very small and irregular in sizes and shape, whereas the some of them are are shape like uh, these shapes uh, are plate like debris. So, EDS analysis again shows the rich iron oxide or the titanium oxide with a minimum amount of the respective elements from the carbides, but you can see the x-ray analysis of these debris show the dominant presence of oxides of iron or the iron titanate. Iron oxide or iron titanate are observed. So, all these results can be understood by the tribochemical reactions. The very important observation so far we obtained is lower loads. So, lower loads the friction is high and the higher loads it is less and same with the high lower loads the wear is high and for the higher loads the wear is less. So, at higher load there is a domination of the tribal layer whereas, at lower loads it is more or less the removal of the material by the mechanical fracture. So, it is now understood at lower loads it is only the mechanical uh, aspect which is contributing to the wear, whereas at higher loads is the tribochemical layer. So, generally what happens big initial stages of sliding due to the difference in the hardness between the steel ball and the cermet, cermet having higher hardness than the steel ball. Because of the difference in hardness steel ball wears out easily and then the elements from the ball iron and chromium from the steel ball gets oxidized because all these testings were done in an ambient conditions. So, there is a chance that iron oxides will form or the chromium oxide will form. So, as the sliding is continued continued these hard debris of iron oxide or chromium oxide they will abrade the cermet material as well. So, we will see we saw some signatures of the abrasion and the entrapment of this debris. So, these abrasion leads to removal of the material from the cermet surface. From the cermet surface the material removal results into the oxidation of these uh, elements from that material. So, we will have an oxidation of the elements for example, the titanium gets oxidized or tungsten is oxidized or niobium is oxidized, tantalum is oxidized, hafnium oxidized, nickelium, nickel oxidizes. So, the oxidation of this elements of cermets is possible in the continuous process of this sliding. Initially, the iron oxide is formed and then hard iron oxide will actually abrade the cermet surface and the elements from the cermet surface also gets oxidized and we will have a oxides forming on the surface, but a higher loads higher loads. So, these oxides debris will be mixed and then compacted as a and then form a tribal layer. This layer is in between the actual bodies of the steel ball as well as the cermet. A particular the higher loads we saw these layer protects the cermet surface from the further wear. So, with increase in load this layer which is which is rich in oxides completely covers the surface and decreases the friction and wear. And based on the lubricity of this layer friction also reduced and then because of the covering of the surface by this layer the further wear is also reduced. So, we have seen the reduced friction on the wear and our XRD analysis also indicate the formation of an iron titanate. 
or iron titanate is generally formed by mixing of reaction with of the iron oxide with the titanium oxide with iron titanate or iron titanate further oxides with an iron ox iron and then forms another form of iron titanate. So, we have seen the iron titanates formed uh, 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 from the debris analysis. So, let us understand this tribochemistry involved at higher temperatures with respect to the friction induced uh, contact temperature. As I told friction is generally high and uh, at the initial contacts and then later on it gets a steady state. So, because of this friction there is a large amount of heat generated at the contact. So, but measuring the temperature at the contact is very much difficult. So, analytically these were studied by a formulae and very importantly the formula used by Arcard shows this the, the change in the flash temperature is a function of this load and uh, the stress and the load and the speed and the thermal conductivity. So, based on and also the friction. So, more is the friction more will be the temperature increase at the contact for a given material and for a given sliding wear conditions. So, uh, using the data for the cermets used in the present investigation the thermal conductivity was determined by rule of mixture and then all other we know the stress maximum stress the load and the velocity. So, by incorporating all these values along with the respect to friction coefficients the temperature rise in the present investigation was found to be from 250 to 340 Celsius based on the Cermet compositions at the highest load of 50 Newton. So, again the thermodynamic data also show such a reaction of iron oxide with the titanium oxide giving iron titanate is not feasible at a temperature more than 500 Celsius. So, it is indirect indication that the temperature is less than 500 Celsius for the present uh, investigation investigated materials in the selected sliding wear contacts. So, this temperature also indicate the feasibility of this iron titanate. So, it is now very clear that the formation of this oxides on the surface will lead to the mixture of this iron oxide and titanium oxide and then lead to iron titanate. So, this iron titanate is thick and also viscous in nature and it actually facilitates the sliding. So, the friction is reduced because of the coverage of this layer. So, the material removal is also reduced. So, and all these conditions indicate the formation of the layer and the removal of the layer at the higher load that means, the tribochemical form layer formation and the removal of such a tribochemical layer dictates the wear behavior. So, our results show that the iron titanium oxide rich layer formation is beneficial in reducing the wear and the friction for this material. The friction behavior can also be understood by a crystal chemical model proposed by this Edmere. So, as we have seen there is a chance that several oxides are formed on the surface at the contact. So, the oxides with higher ionic potentials possesses greater shielding of that cation by surrounding the anions. So, the cation has a little or no chemical interaction with the other cations in the system. So, the sliding interface which is rich with the oxides of a very larger difference in ionic potentials will result in a very poor adhesive interactions. So, it it actually contributes to the lesser friction. So, based on this we again understood the steady state coefficient of friction with respect to the possible binary oxide combinations during this sliding and the difference in their ionic potential. 
So, you can see the formation of this possible oxides are like this iron oxide or titanium oxide are possible with the baseline cermates. Whereas, in addition to that you have iron oxide tungsten oxide or titanium oxide tungsten oxide combination is also pos is possible in this particular cermate. So, we have actually listed down this possible binary oxides combination during the sliding of this respect to cermate materials and the difference in the ionic potentials are also listed. Now, you see here at particularly the higher lo uh, lower load conditions higher the ionic potential lower is the friction coefficient. You can see the higher diff, uh, ionic potential lower is the friction coefficient lower is the difference in ionic potential you have higher is the coefficient of friction, but actually this behavior is not observed at a higher load resign that indicates whenever you have the wear dominated by the mechanical aspects the abrasion and pull out and the fracture then you have the effect of these oxides and then respect to difference in the ionic potentials on the friction behavior. Whereas, at higher load we have seen the surface is completely covered with a tribo layer rich in oxides and particularly the iron titanium oxide. So, it is actually happening like this the surface is filled with the oxide. So, the, 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 the friction or the sliding is actually going on between the layers of these oxides. So, the actual contact between the steel ball and the cermet surface is lost it is only between the layers of this oxides. So, you do not have any such influence of this difference in ionic potential at higher loads where there is a domination of the tribochemical layer formation. So, the crystal chemical model is applied only at the lower loads where there is a mechanical fracture induced wear. So, whereas at higher loads this does not happen. So, overall putting this uh, as a summary of this uh, sliding wear mechanisms at lower loads there is a lot of debrasion, abrasion and then debris and then that leads to oxidation of this debris and there is an onset of such a tribal layers, but this layer becomes a dense on covering out entirely the worn surface and this layer is rich with the iron titanium oxides. So, the layer is cracked and then removed. So, mainly the wear occurs at higher loads by removal of such a layer rich with the iron titanium oxide, whereas at lower loads the wear is more dominantly by the abrasion or the cracking or pull out of this material. So, because this is a cermet material we have a nickel binder phase which is easily deformable than the ceramic phase in a structure of this cermet. Now, sliding during sliding the deformable material which is the binder phase is smeared out and then once this smeared out it comes out and then gets oxidized, but once these are the binder phase is detached from the ceramic grains the ceramics are ceramic grains are subjected to sliding because of the brittleness of the ceramic materials. So, those get fractured and then small debris will form again those debris will be subjected to oxidation. So, the process is like this initial conditions of the sliding the deformable material or this nickel binder phase comes out and the smears out and deforms followed by the cracking of these ceramic core and rims phases. So, at a lower loads the oxidation or this abrasion is dominant at higher loads the oxidation oxidation of this ox uh, of this debris. So, that will lead to a compacted layer which is rich with the iron titanium oxide because it fills entirely on the surface and then it reduces further wear from the underneath surface. So, the overall conclusions from the present study at lower loads the friction and wear are influenced by the microstructural constituents of these titanium carbonated nickel based cermets. At lower load that is at 5 Newton the formation of abrasive oxides of these metals of this 
transition metals is dominant resulting in higher friction. Also the chemical characteristics of various possible oxide combinations dominate the friction at lower loads. So, among the cermets investigated here the lowest wear loss was observed for the cermet containing tantalum carbide whereas other cermets exhibited similar and slightly inferior wear resistance. Regarding to the mechanism that lower load the abrasion and mild tribo layer are predominant. However, the formation of dense tribochemical layer which is rich in oxides of iron and titanium or iron or titanium is responsible for the reduction in the friction and wear at higher loads. So, based on the chemical nature of these oxidative products and the frictional heating calculations, it was found that the contact temperature should be below 500 Celsius. So, one of the important observations from this study is that the friction and wear properties do not exhibit any direct correlation with the, the mechanical properties. Remember it has a hardness influence only at the lower load conditions, at higher loads there is no such relation. So, when tribochemical layer is formed you do not have such a relation with the properties, because the contact surface is actually covered by this tribochemical layer. So, that means when tribochemical layer formation is dominant you do not have any relation at the interface of the investigated tribo contacts. So, this particular study highlights the evolution of the tribochemical layer that has a relation with the contact temperatures. So, for the given cermet composition and the sliding wear conditions the tribochemical layer evolves. So, it is very important uh, uh, study for the application point of view. So, you have to identify uh, the cermet composition and the suitable sliding wear conditions so that these cermets can be preferred for these tribological applications for example, this cutting tools. Thank you, we will see in the next class.